Hey everybody, welcome to the Ukulele Video Play Along Podcast. I'm Chris Russell and with me is... Andy Ramos. And we are at TMEA and the lighting is really bad actually behind us. So just so you know, um, kind of fun. So Andy and I met last year at TMEA after Andy started making videos. I want to make sure we're recording, right? I just want to make sure... Yolanda, his, yeah, we are recording. Yolanda, his wife, is adding some extra light, but it's not really helping off the phone, so that's okay. So we're good. Um, so Andy, I wanted uh, to let people get a chance to know you. Tell them a little bit about what you're doing now, what got you to ukulele, and what your plans are with the ukulele in the future. Yeah. Um, right now I'm teaching middle school uh, choir and piano, 6th, 7th, and 8th grade um, in Houston, ISD. Uh, before that, I was teaching elementary music. Um, doing a little bit of everything, general music, ukulele, xylophone, drums. Um, enjoying working with the middle school kids. Um, a little older, a um, little more mature, um, can do a little more. Um, so I'm, I'm enjoying working with them. Um, the ukulele stuff just came out of wanting to have some more resources for my students. Um, I didn't see too much stuff online. I hadn't found your YouTube channel yet when I first started. And so I just started making some videos just for my kids to work on strumming, um, to work on a few different things that um, I wanted them to work on and have, you know, like a little beat in the background, some music in the background. Um, and that evolved to making the videos and then um, making more videos. Now, do you, do you remember what the first videos were that you made by chance? The first ones I made um, were the, the C jam and the A minor. And then I did Guantanamera, just no rhyme, no reason. I just, it's a, I think it's a song that we were singing for like um, Hispanic heritage or something. Um, and I didn't make it for them to play. I just wanted to see, I saw your video on how to make um, the ukulele videos. So I said, I'm gonna try it with the song that we were working on. Um, and then from there I started doing like the F, I think I did the F one and the G one. And then some that kind of combined the two, did C and A minor together, A minor and F together. Um, just so they can start working on that switching um, between chords. Now, did you already have those audio files created somewhere? Um, I made them, just got into Logic. Um, um, I think most of them are Logic, maybe one of them's in GarageBand. Um, I just played a chord and built a little beat around it just to have something for them to, to feel and play along with. So, Andy, what would you say your main instrument is? My main instrument is probably piano. Okay. And then in high school, you, and you said you played saxophone? I played saxophone from sixth grade through college. Um, in college, I was a theory comp major, so started playing more piano. Um, and then I'd, I play at a church and play piano at church. I don't know about you, but one of the things that I've found that's been really fun about the ukulele playlongs is I get a chance to use my theory, which sounds absolutely crazy but I get a chance to think about it. And um, I'm always wondering sometimes what chords are there. And then when, one of the very first things I do is I look online to see if anybody else has played the song or, or charted it out. And almost all the time I disagree with what, right. what their chords are. I don't know if you feel the same way. And it's like, that chord doesn't make any sense there. Why do you say that that chord's, and then I'm listening to it and it doesn't work. I don't, I know like Dr. Reese like analyzes the bass line sometimes. I don't even go to that. I'm just always using my ears with the, you know, with the chords as a whole. And I'm now to the point where I'm actually just doing it with my ukulele instead of the piano. But do you still find yourself going back to piano to figure it out sometimes? It, or? it depends on the song. Um, but I, I find the same thing. I mean, I don't like a lot of the chords. Most of the time the lyrics aren't even right um, when I look at some of the stuff. <laughs> That's true, um, yeah. But I, I use the piano some. It, it just depends on the song. Um, sometimes I'll just sit down and just write a chord chart because um, that's just something I try to do every once in a while uh, with no instrument, just write out the chord just to keep my ears, uh, you know, working. Yeah, I'm sharp, um, yeah. Sharp. Um, and I am doing a lot more with the ukulele uh, since I've been playing it. Um, I actually do a lot of it in our kitchen, in our kitchen table. That's kind of where we work. Me too, um, actually. That's really funny. And so. Yeah. Um, I do have a little portable keyboard, but um, I try to do as much as I can on the ukulele. Okay. And now, I know you have a couple of ukuleles now? Yeah. I have uh, three, I guess. Um, a Schmidt, the Cordoba, and I don't even know what the other one is. 
Um, and the Cordoba was a gift from your wife, right? Last Christmas. Christmas, this most recent Christmas? No. A, a year, year ago. A year. Oh, so you missed this year's Christmas ukulele. There's supposed to be one every Christmas. Right? No, I'm just joking. We were just, just having fun with it. We were just at a ukulele session talking about apples, so that's all good. <laughs> so um, it was a Kodai-inspired ukulele session, and... Uh, I guess a good session. Everybody else there was very entertained, but I know I had to get out of that. So it's very basic. Yeah, it's okay. Basic is okay too. But we'd like to see some more intermediate stuff as we go. Yes. Now I know, um, Annie. You also just recently got the new iPad Pro. You got the 12-inch one, which is a year newer than mine. And Andy is like me, where he uses LumaFusion to make his videos, and and I think that's a lot easier than iMovie. Have you ever tried the iMovie approach? I did iMovie. That was like the first video I ever tried to make. I tried to use iMovie and I was really frustrated with it. Um, and it just took too long. It was For me, it was just long. It was a long process. And I, I know you, he's also, you're also, well, he also, you, are making some um, other versions now, like guitar. Right. And we were talking about you might start making some baritone two of, of your songs. And one of the things I really loved about Andy that he brought out immediately when I, and I can't remember when I saw your first video, just like YouTube, we saw somebody else today that you, you'd mentioned that showed up in your feed. Andy's video, video showed up in my feed, which was pretty cool. And I remember we were emailing back and forth and found out that you were actually in Texas because I didn't know where you were. And then we met last year, which was, I don't know, that was a high point for me last year. And what's turned out is that Andy actually has turned into a friend. I'd call you a friend, um, even though we don't hang out very much. And like I told his wife today, and I've told you before, that if I was around here, we'd probably make, make you sick of me because we'd be hanging out together talking about stuff. And we share a lot of other values in common, I think, some faith values and some other things, which has made this kind of fun. A lot of neat people um, that you get a chance to meet. But um, I've learned a lot from Andy, too. So there's little, I know that you've taken some of the stuff that I've done, and you've run with it, and then I've learned some things back. Um, just for an example, something really simple is after I make a video, I was just deleting them in the past. And I think from the very start, when we talked last year, you were using the archival feature to send it probably to Dropbox, Dropbox. or something. And I've been saving it to iCloud since then, but I was just like, why am I not saving these? Because then if you ever need them, everything is in that package, and you can pull them up again. So I had at that point made, I don't know, 150 videos, and they were all just gone at that point. So I was like, okay, now that's really good. And then even more recently, your use of shadows was another thing that I had not done before. So Andy had talked about, and by the way, Andy is the co-chair of the ukulele video play-along Facebook. Facebook group, which is now, I don't know, we have like 500 people there now, yeah, close to it, which is really nice. And all we do is post about Facebook stuff, or not Facebook stuff, but play along play stuff. Um, people are welcome to ask other questions. The ones that I do delete are the people that just come on and say, hi, thanks for the adding me. It's like, you don't have to do that. That's the one thing you can skip here. You know, that guy, I guess I'm just antisocial in that regard, but it's just don't, don't waste it. If you have a question about ukulele, if you have a question about the video play along, please ask him. But you don't have to, like, say, hi, everybody. You know, it's, you're welcome from the very start. So kind of, kind of thing. Um, let's see. So you've got the equipment of LumaFusion. We do a couple things different um, in preparing the song. So how, where do you get your audio files from? Um, usually iTunes. Okay. Um, I, you know, I'll buy the MP3 and uh, start working from there. And if I need to adjust it, then I'll either put it in Ableton to transpose it or uh, Amazing Slowdown or app. Uh, is it on your iPad or is that on your Mac? Or? The app is on the, on the iPad. Ableton's on my laptop. Will Amazing Slowdown or export it into then LumaFusion? Yes. Okay, see, I didn't know that. And you can share it. See, I usually just take the audio from an existing YouTube file, and I use my friendly iCab Pro or iCab Mobile to do that. The one thing that I do find most of the time is that if I'm ripping a file from, the, from YouTube to, to do that, if it's in there with other people that have made lyric videos, I know that I'm probably okay not getting it blocked. That's the one way that I know for sure. Nothing is worse than making a video and then you're done with it and you upload it and you get the message, oh, your video's been blocked. That, that is a gut-wrenching 
moment. You feel like you've just wasted your life at that point. Wasted that a point. few hours. And also, just so everybody knows, when you make a different version, there's a lot of adjustment because like, some of those fonts are wider. Well, not really wider, but some the bubbles extend further. So when you go back and make a second version of it, you've got to adjust all those lines. Right. And I don't know if you just adjust X and Y, but I actually most of the time just grab the Apple Pencil and move it left or right. I do the X, the X and Y. Do you really? Because yeah. it it's hard for me to find. Um, has your workflow changed any with the iPad Pro and the Apple Pencil? Yes. To me, it's a lot easier on the iPad Pro. And then even the last Luma update, um, to me, things snap in better. Yes. Um, so it's easier to adjust with the new, you know, like the XY. Um, I used to, like, try to move it, and then it would move a bunch. And now I can, like, really move it, you know, small increments um, by using the arrows. Um, so it's, it's helped me a lot. And then having the big iPad, it's a lot easier to see um, some of the stuff. So it's, the adjustments just make it a lot easier um, for me. How do you get lyrics? Are you copying and pasting from another app? I'm copying and pasting. So I'll have the LumaFusion open. And then side by side, I'll open up my... I used to put it in my notes. Okay. And so I put the lyrics in my notes, open up the notes simultaneously on the side, and copy, paste, and I have to adjust for the font and all that. With, you know, that's my set of other questions I was going to ask you is one of the things I've found, and this was like, it didn't used to be this way, but after iOS 12, I think it changed. But I used to be able to just copy a font and just stick it in LumaFusion, and the font would just be its whatever had been selected. But after iOS 12, it changed the font to whatever. So now what I have to do is I highlight the font, I open, an, I open the app called Shortcuts, and there's a workflow in there that this is now, it used to be called workflow, but now Apple owns it. And I paste it in and it removes all the formatting and then I can just paste it over nice. without having to mess with it. So if, try that. if we don't, yeah, if we don't, if we don't, you know, we'll, we'll, I'll show you how I've been doing that. And that, that's been very successful, but it's an extra step. That, that's true, that didn't used to be there. Yeah. So, um, yeah, let's see, some other things. I know you, you actually managed to put those transitions exactly on the spot. Yeah, usually what I'll do, so when I do the song, um, I have my lyrics on the top layer. Yep. The square, whatever I'm using on the second layer. In the middle layer, yeah. Um, and a lot of times what I'll do is I'll actually do all the squares first. Um, so I can just see the squares moving. Really? Okay. Um, all right. It just depends on the song. So if, if it's a lot of songs, if it's a pop song, and I, you can tell they're using a metronome, yep. I can just set it to whatever, a minute, to, you know, whatever, 120 frames, and then just every single one's 120 frames. Um, and then some of them that are a little different, um, sometimes I'll just either, if I have the lyrics, I'll hide the lyrics um, in LumaFusion. And then just look at the squares and see how the squares are moving. Okay. Um, just to make sure they're a little more on it. And then, of course, I get my wife to proofread everything. And oh, do you actually do that for your, your husband? That's very kind. I don't so. get that kind of support from my wife in that category. <laughs> don't worry. She'll never watch this, so it's okay. <laughs> it's, it's all right. She supports me. She, she, she allows me to work at the kitchen table and, you know, to have my stuff up there for whatever period of time it is. Yeah. Um, I was joking with Chris Gilbert earlier today, so I'm not sure when I'll, both these podcasts will come on. I, I won't put them on the same day because you want people to listen at another time. But um, I was talking with Chris Gilbert about how much she's making doing this, and her answer, of course, was nothing. nothing. Just And again, I think that's really important to highlight to people, not because we're trying to make people feel bad, but just understand that when you have one of these videos, it really is a gift and a sharing. And you're like, well, you're using your classroom. Well, not all the time. Because we're just like you. We start off with the same first few chords, and it takes us a while to get to being able to play an E7. You know, that's not something you pull out in the first week. Right. Although there has not been a session here today that's probably even played E minor. Nope. I don't think. So let's see. What was the other one? So, But when you have that transition, I notice it's dead on the spot, and I, I try to get close, you know, and I, I proceed it by, if I'm looking at a second, I usually pull mine out to about a second. I don't go any shorter than a second. So I pull out a second as long as I can go. I usually end up being, you know, that part, like a fifth before it hits. But I use that fade, that, that dip transition, and you don't use that dip transition. And that's one of the spots to be different, which saves you some time post-editing for sure. 
yeah. especially with multiple versions. But it's so that's one of our differences, and and I that's okay. I mean, it's okay. But one of the things I can always trust about your videos is that everything's gonna be right. You know what I mean? I, I love that too. So and the other thing that I really loved about it is, and this is where I now I'm going way back to what about ten minutes ago. But you, when you came out originally with your videos, a lot of them were uh, in Spanish, and it, I think this is a big surprise to everybody, but Andy has a Hispanic heritage. Definitely. You know? Si. Yeah. We. Oui. You should have said we, oui, <laughs> or, or ya, yeah, ya, yeah, or niet. What is yes in Russian? I can't remember. Da. Da, right? No, just joking. <laughs> but um, I love that. And, and I've spent some time, I actually speak Spanish more or less, probably less right now than more, but... But you know, in that context, and I've lived in some Spanish-speaking countries, and um, so I, I have an affinity towards Hispanic culture as a whole. So to start seeing those songs come out was really cool, because it felt like you were bringing a piece of you into that, and it was a neat gap. Because in fact, I think where was that thread, where we were talking about? There at some point there was this discussion about. Spanish songs. Do you, do you remember? Was that in Facebook? Like, it was Facebook. Or something? And it wasn't our group yet. But we were talking about like what, what Spanish songs are out there. And I had had a couple. Like I had um, La Bamba, you know, Richie Valens, you know. But at that point, you were in that, I think, early on in the process of making songs. And since that point, you've added a few. Although it's today we were talking, we had lunch together, and uh, which I appreciate a lot. It was a good good discussion, getting a chance to know Andy and his wife a little better. My wife is back in Minnesota, where it's probably minus something right now. And it was 85 degrees here today, so she won't talk to me when I get back. But I got her some vanilla, and I was riding on a scooter through the cities of San Antonio today with a ukulele strapped to my back. Side note. Isn't there an old song about with a back a snap sack on my back? Down there, yodely, yodelai. I'll have to think about it. I think it's The Wanderer, The Happy Wanderer. Have you ever heard that song? Yeah. yeah. If not, I, I feel a play-along coming <laughs> from my German heritage of The Wanderer. No, just, just kidding. But, but so anyway, I really love the fact that you brought those those songs into the deal. And we were, we were talking about Guantanamera was your your first. You've done, for sure, Las Mañanitas. Vivid Mi Vida, Mark Anthony. Yep. Um, bitty bitty bomb bomb. Yeah, yeah, we were talking about Selena a little bit today. You're gonna bring out any other Selena tunes? I need to. Okay. Uh, well, I did Como la Flor. So I've done yeah, two. that's true. Como la um, Flor. But I do need to do some more. Oh, De Colores. You did De that. Colores, um, Sabor a mi, which is a, like a traditional Hispanic. Um, my dad's from Puerto Rico, so that's the kind of music he. What was the one with uh, Demi Lovato and? Echame la culpa. Echame la culpa. And then Mi gente, which is. What is Echame mean? Something uh, to blame? Like give me the blame, yeah. yeah. Give me the blame, yeah. Mi gente, which is... Um, Mi gente. One chord, the entire song. Yeah, that's right. Um, and he also did a couple others that you can find that were blocked, like the Axel F one. Yeah. Why was that one blocked? But I think you know? I used the actual video. Bum, 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 bum. Is that what it was? Yeah. I did that once with the, uh, the Despacito, except it was with the duck. Uh, yeah. The Ernie, and the, the Ernie and Bert one. Because somebody had asked for it. El Patito? No, there we go. I think that it was, yeah. yeah. El Patito. El Patito. So I, I really appreciate that. And so it's been great. Andy's been able to ask me questions and ask me things. I've been able to ask him questions. And, and then really, it's been collegial working with you. So yeah. it's been fantastic. Um, let's see. What are other things we should talk about just while you're here? Because, again, I like people to get to know people. So I know you guys have one daughter who's out of high school and out of community, well, tech college. Right, as our associates. Yep, and working on working on a job and looking at becoming possibly a nurse down the road. We talked about today taking away all the story from you. I shouldn't do that. Huh. Um, and you guys live in Houston, and you're a Houston Astros fan. Definitely. And you play piano at a church and also lead worship with some of the Hispanic services, right? Or Spanish? Which would you call that? Spanish yeah. services. Spanish services. Yep. And uh, let's see what else. What else we can talk? I don't know. Well, I'm I'm hoping that during the in the Facebook page with the ukulele play alongs that more people will ask questions and reach out. Um, it's not a competitive thing, competitive no. thing that we're doing. Um, you know, we're trying to help each other out, help our schools out, help uh, 
YouTube community. Um, so I'm hoping more people start looking at what we're doing and uh, making their own videos and trying it out, trying LumaFusion or whatever program they want to try to use um, to expand and build. You know, we, we go to these conferences and everybody's still at a beginner level. We kind of like to advance that a little more and see a little more growth um, with the ukulele and teaching ukulele. And I mean, they're selling like crazy here. Yeah. You know, I mean, it, it's insane. Um, they're selling hundreds. Yeah. I saw, more, grand, you know? yeah. I saw more people carrying ukuleles this year than ever. Than ever. And you carry your own ukulele, nobody even bats an eye anymore, where in the past it would have been like, what are you... What do you hold in there? And I think what, you're, what we were talking about was, in effect, Andy and I were talking about this a little bit. He's working on one song right now where um, you're choosing which key to use. It normally comes in E, and with Ableton, he's able to change keys. Right. I usually use Twisted Wave on the iPad, so I pull it out of iCab Mobile into Twisted Wave. I do whatever tweaking of keys and then export out into to LumaFusion. You pull it into your Mac, into... Ableton and then export out of Ableton. Do you airdrop it to your iPad then? Yes. Air, uh, airdrop is awesome, beyond, beyond belief. And then the other things, um, if we ever have a video that's blocked, like XLF, a lot of times I'll put them on a Google Drive and make them accessible if you look on the search. So you can find that one there. I'm trying to think, you also had another one that got blocked. Do you remember which one that was recently? Changes. Changes. XXX Tentacion. Yeah kind of a scary name but we won't <laughs> worry about that and you just recently did what about excuse me what about us by pink right yeah and then there was one other one i, I made a joke on the the page like slow down andy because he did like three in a night or something like uh, that see you again east side no east side west side east side's been around for a while yeah east side um and then the yesterday i did the wood what do I know? Somebody's beeping out there. I don't know. It's downtown, uh, what do you call it? Downtown San Antonio kind of deal. So it just depends on my schedule. If I can fit some in, I try to get them in. And... It becomes a hobby. And it feels really good to get one done and to share it. And where do you get your ideas? You, you said you get... My students, um, different people. And so what I usually do is I have Spotify. I'll make, I have a playlist for ukulele songs. That's kind of cool. And then I just kind of go through the songs and see wh which ones are appropriate, which ones aren't. Um, try to do stuff that doesn't have language in it, doesn't have, you know, talk about drugs or anything else since I am in a school setting. Um, so I, I keep that list and I go through the songs and check out the lyrics, check out the meaning as much as I can, and um, then decide from there, see if anybody else has done one. Um, try not to do something that someone else has done, but every once in a while I miss it. Well, yeah, I mean, I had that same thing happen with one of Andy's, you know, he had done Party in the USA, and I, I got done with it, and I looked, and all of a sudden, Andy did this one. So then I just made sure I brought it into a different key and baritone, because that hadn't been done yet. So it was like, okay, at least there's some justification there for doing it, but oof, you know, that's not a good feeling. But although, you know, so it's not competitive, but we're not trying to step on each other's toes. But sometimes, I'll be honest with you, like some of the, the early Dr. Reese ones, one of the neat things I think about our versions is we put in the text. So it's really large, it's really clear, it's really legible. Um, and that's another difference between you guys. Sometimes you do kind of something kind of cool where the chords are still progressing, but the text will change mid you know, mid lyrics. I was noticing that the other day. So, like, the text will change to the next set of lyrics, even though the chords haven't changed down there. And I typically wait for that whole set before I, I refresh. I thought, okay, there's another difference between Andy and I and the way that you do things. I think part of that is because since I was doing elementary, they couldn't handle more than four chords on a screen. Yep. And so it made me do something different with the lyrics. Um, Whereas since you were in middle school, you. You could I can go more longer, chords, like a re yeah. And my middle school kids just it could not. My <laughs> elementary kids could not see it, confuse them to see that many chords. So I had to make them into like little four chord um, sections, little chunks. Yeah. But that's smart. I mean, that's that's. I mean, that's practical and smart and good feedback too in terms of things. I mean, sometimes you have to go, you know, in a longer yeah. sequence and. Sometimes it doesn't hurt if it's repetitive, but I see your, yeah, I'm totally, but I mean, I was even saying like there was one song that we were just using, I'm trying to which one it was, but it was actually like 
it was only four chords, but even the lyrics changed while those four chords were going. Right. So it's like, so it wasn't, you know, the lyrics were continuing to change. I thought that was, that was pretty good use of, of stuff. I wasn't able to quite wrap my, my brain around how I would change that and, and make that work, but it was pretty cool. If the chords are repetitive, it's really easy to do. If not, then there's a lot of little cuts that I have to put in there. You know, we also both use cordette, mm -hmm. you know, and we kind of do that. And so it's been, it's been a lot of fun. And I've learned things from you, which is really cool. So, uh, anyway, so anyway, getting down back down to it is that there's some old videos of Dr. Reese's that, for example, just the graphics aren't appealing to me, so I, I want to redo. Or one that just got blocked to me, Jambalaya. I had just redone that one um, because the original recording is like 40 cents flat. And it just, you're playing ukulele, it's in tune, and you've got a recording that, the recording is 40 cents flat. I don't know what they were, what they were using, like a, I don't know, a430 or something, or a420. But it was, it was really low, and so you're playing the C chord, but you're really almost going a full, you know, yikes, you know, quarter step flat, and you just hear it. So I changed that one, and so... Not intentionally. It's not like, oh, I want to go remake Jambalaya because all my kids want to play it. No, but when it's when you need a two chord song with C and G seven, that's the place to go. So, yeah. And then um, the other thing I hope with ukulele video play is that other people start making them. Right. I know that some of Dr. Reese's students were making them as projects in the past, so that's where we get some of them from um, that aren't really from you or me or Chris Gilbert. And I also need to say I'm not sure what your total number of videos is right now. It's like 170 something. Yeah, I mean, you have, to 200. you have really come across like big. I mean, right now, it's, I think I have the most, it's not a competition for that, but you've surpassed anybody else in that category. And if I take a nap here, he's going to pass me while I'm sleeping, <laughs> which I'm not actually worried about because I can absolutely just use anything you make because I, I just trust that you got it and you do it well. So, you know, it's just been a pleasure. So, not nice. Right? And should we say anything else? Do you have a website or anything beyond the YouTube channel? No. I used to, but I let it go. And okay. Maybe, maybe later. Let it go. Let it go. Oh, yeah, sorry. I'm, um, not, I'm not a writer. That's why she proofreads everything. So. Fair enough. Maybe, maybe in the future. What was I going to say? Oh, um, do you have a, a YouTube-specific URL yet? Or have you been allowed it's to? It's Andy Ramos. So you go YouTube.com slash Andy Ramos? Mm -hmm. Is there any space in there or anything? I don't think so. Okay, so all one word, Andy Ramos. So I just, and if you see my YouTube channel, which is ukulele tenor, Andy is definitely on my featured list. I think you're at the top over there. So yeah, it's just been a pleasure. So someone that's become a friend and colleague, and again, if, if we live closer, I'd hang out with. Definitely. We'd sing ukulele and get in trouble. I'd probably end up going to his church too, so. It's really true. We get in trouble. We didn't, did not get in trouble. We did not get kicked out of that session. We just left at an opportune time. We were probably getting the look from his wife at the point that we were both giggling about responding about, oh, strumming patterns. That's what we should talk about before we end. Sure. Another thing that Andy and I don't do frequently is talk about strumming patterns, although you will put it in comments. Right? Do you put it in comments. comments or do you put it in the description? I'll put it in, in the comments. Okay. So I don't worry about strumming patterns most of the time. I don't, I don't care as long as kids' hands are moving up yeah. and down. That's, so that's why I don't stress out about it. But we both get kids that if it says a strumming pattern, they will latch on to that and just... Yeah. But I'm not doing down, down, up, down, up, down. Yeah. Well, Doesn't matter. I don't really need you to go down, down, up, See, up, down, up. Teaching elementary, sometimes they feel like they have to do that strum pattern. And yep. they can't. They can just do down for right now. And so right. that's why I didn't put them on there. Um, I don't mind telling people who ask what's the strumming pattern, um, but to that's me that's why, part of the that's why I have comments turned off on my videos. That's part yeah. of the, to me that's part of the, your your ear training. Yeah, absolutely. And developing that rhythm because if you can't do the rhythm, you can't really eventually do the song. I mean, if you can't draw a shape, you're not going to be able to draw the picture. There's certain things that you just kind of have to learn to do, um, no matter what area you're. And to me, that strumming pattern is just one of those things where someone that's advanced is going to do way more. What I can do with my middle school kids is way more advanced um, strumming-wise than I could when I was teaching elementary. Yeah. And I'm not against, like, strumming practices or anything like right. that down the road. But I just, I just don't want to spend the time 
you know, really do that. There's been a couple plucking patterns, like Hey There Delilah, which I think right. does have like a specific plucking pattern, you know, and then I will put in some tab every now and then, like I did with Broken yesterday, you know, um, but yeah, I just don't want to get caught up in that battle. You see, I don't mind the tab. Tab is, I mean, and I have some strumming videos. Yeah. Um, for the kids to work on strumming, but I don't want them to feel like, even those videos, I don't have a strum pattern on there. I'm teaching it while I'm teaching the class. Um, and now, you know, some kids are doing some simple strumming. Some other kids are doing something more advanced. Um, I don't want them to feel like they have to be locked in. We, and if we leave it open, that also gives the teacher right. of the class who's using it or the group that's using it a chance to talk about what, what strumming pattern. And to be honest with you, having been, I don't know if you played any ukulele groups, if you've done that yet. A couple. Um, but when you do that, they all break down to a shuffle strum anyway. Like adults, it all suddenly becomes down, up, down, up, down. That's all everybody does the whole time. So, you know, even adults, you know, kind of whatever the strumming pattern is supposed to be, they still break down into yikes. So, it's, and it's not insulting them. It's just, just reality. You know, you know, have you heard the name Lil Rev? Yes. He's, you know, he's up in the Milwaukee area. But he's like a teacher, and he actually goes around ukulele festivals teaching, I don't know, 36 different strumming patterns is one of his sessions. And he makes fun of ukulele groups for just playing one pattern all the time. And it's just not worth getting fussed up about, yeah. you know? So it's all good. So anyway, I want you to get a chance to meet Andy. Great guy. Subscribe to his channel. Hit that subscribe button. You know, check out everything that he does. New video about about once a week or sometimes two a week depending on what happens and yeah just huge contributor in both pop music some of the 19 what early rock stuff mm -hmm. like we were talking about at one point that you like to do the videos too of like um wasn't it like louis louis or louis mm -hmm. louis yeah, you van know halen. van halen and adding some of those jump yeah wasn't that one of them yeah. that was in there and of course adding songs from the Hispanic side, which is kind of wonderful. And if you have a program where you've got Hispanic kids in your program, and not just, you know, the, the odd Hispanic one kid in your program, but if you have, like, a plural situation where you've got Hispanic kids in your program, why wouldn't you want to be using some videos? And I've even been watching some of my own Hispanic students as we hit songs. Um, you know, we did, you know, like, uh, Bitty Bitty Bomb Bomb. You know, you watch their eyes light up a little bit because even though they're young, they still number one they know it's Spanish, and number two, they've heard of Selena. Even if a movie, yeah, even if they haven't, you know, they're too young to actually experience her as as a live student, and that's important. And, and that's why also, if there are people of other heritages out there that want to start making play along videos with their knowledge that other people can use, by all means, do it. Help us out, you know, add to this. So, Definitely. I don't know. I'm just preaching here. I shouldn't do that. So, all right. Well, Andy, it's been a pleasure. And to everybody else, check out Andy's page, youtube.com, Andy Ramos. And we'll catch you next time. Bye.